Okay, YouTube, I got a treat for us today. So, let's see, we can talk about batteries, build something cool, answer the age-old question, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Ooh, these are good options. I don't know, I kind of like building something, but you know what? Let's go with batteries. Okay, so I've got a lipo here. I've got a nickel metal pack. I've got another nickel metal pack. And then there's another lipo. Another lipo. Another lipo. And oh look, another lipo. And uh, oh look, another nickel metal pack. So I'm going to share with you today my knowledge on batteries. So let's start with lipos first, because they're uh, they're an interesting battery. So this is my helicopter batteries. Is in this one is a uh, 3s lipo or 11.1 volt, and that 11.1 is the um, it is the um, the lowest amount of the lowest. Uh, voltage that the battery can go at so each uh, cell in there when it's at the lowest it can go is 3.7 volts so you, you times that by so you times 3.7 by 3 and you get 11.1 now when these are at full charge they're going to go up to about 4.2 volts which would uh which would then be 12.6 uh, because you've got three of them. And this one here is a 7.4, which would be an 8.40 when it's done charging. So you can see these numbers on the batteries. What does this mean? What's that mean? And what's that mean? Well, I've explained this. So now I'm going to explain this. So this is your milliamp hours or your run time, basically. So for my Jeep, I get about an hour and like an hour and a half or so of runtime out of this battery pack. And uh, it's got a 50C discharge rate and a 5C charge rate on it. So, and it's also roar approved. I don't know what that means really, but. <laughs> So the uh, 50C, what does that mean? Well, that's basically um, when you're running, so when it's in the Jeep and it's running it, this one will, since there's 50 amps basically is what it's providing in, to the model and you're only using probably about 10 in, in the Jeep because it is a crawler. Actually, you may not, you're probably not even using 10 amps. You're probably using about five. This battery, when you take it out of the model, will still be cool. Whereas if I had a 20C, that battery would be starting to get warm because it's sending all its amperage and, and the Jeep's using a good amount of that amperage. So next we have your charge rate. So... The charge rate. Well, this one, and if this were one C right here, that means I would only want to charge this at 5.2 amps. Uh, so if I were, so with a 5C charge rate, if I go 5.2 times that by 5, you would get 26. Now my charger cannot go up to 26 amps but if yours can and you can charge it at that much current the most I can do on my charger is six so at 26 amps this battery would probably take about 15 minutes to charge All right, but uh, you may suffer a little bit of run time though so that's why I always charge uh, my batteries at a little bit lower amperage give them just a little bit longer run time and the uh, cells are typically like each cell will actually be at 4.2 instead of maybe 4.19 and 4.18. <coughs> so next we get uh, your nickel metal hydride. These are a very simple battery. 
And you, you, all you do is basically just plug them in, set your amperage, and charge them. So this one right here, this is a 5,000 mAh. I'm going to want to charge this one at 5.0 amps. Because your decimal's over here, and you got to move it over here. Now that's for peak charging. So peak charging, what it does is it it's, it's a way to charge the battery in the quickest amount of time by giving it the most amount of power it can in that time. I hope that uh, explains it for that. So this one, if I'm going to run my Jeep and let's say I don't have to be at the crawler course till noon or so and it's 10 a.m. What I'll do is I'll put it on the charger, charge it at 5.0 amps. Now if it was earlier in the morning, let's say 8, I would put it at a little bit lower amperage and wait. So this one is 3,000 mAh, so I would charge it at 3 amps. And this one's 4.2, charge it at 4.2 amps. <coughs> so with LiPo's, you get this lead right here, and this is your balance lead. So with LiPo's, you have to make sure that each cell is running at the same amount of voltage as the other one. So with a 2S, I want to make sure that both cells in here, that's what the 2S stands for, I want to make sure that both cells are at 2 point, or 4.2 amps is what I want to make sure. So if you have a lipo checker, you can usually tell this stuff. Mine's tucked away somewhere, so I'm not going to uh, grab it out because that would make the video even longer than it has to be. So this one, this one here also has that balance port. Now the balance port is something you'll mainly see on lithium batteries, but not so much on uh, nickel metal packs. I mean, you could put one on a nickel metal pack, but it's not really needed. Even these ones have it. For a 1S LiPo, like this, you're not going to have a balance port because there's only one cell. So this right here is a seven cell nickel metal pack. And this one, so when these, uh, so when the batteries in uh, nickel metal packs are at, oh, the lowest amount of voltage that they're going to go to is 1.2 volts. So, that's what that's where this 8.4 number comes from. And then when I charge it at 3.0 amps, it'll probably be at uh, 10 point, uh, 10.3 amps or so, or 10.3 volts is what this thing will be registering at. Okay, so next we want to go to these small packs right here. So this 3S LiPo uh, has a capacity of 300 mAh. So what do I want to charge this at? Well, I'm going to take the decimal and put it right in front of the 3. So a 0.3. Now this one does not say what the uh, max C charge rating is, but I will say this, that is the charger that came with it uh, sends out current of 0.9 amps. So this one right here, I can, uh, before this stuff all got scratched off, I could read that uh, they only wanted me to charge it at a 1C charge rate. So they only wanted me to charge it at 0.8 amps. Okay, with lipos, I do not recommend running them in a model that does not have a lipo cutoff. And what a lipo cutoff does is it keeps your battery, is it keeps this from, uh, it keeps the voltage from getting too low. So instead of risking the voltage going, front, going below 3.7, it's better to just not run them. But you can still run nickel metal packs 
and uh, if your electronic speed controller will allow a, uh, an 8 cell nickel metal pack, I highly recommend it. Or even a 7 cell nickel metal pack because you can get quite a bit of power out of one of those. Okay guys, be sure to comment on the video, rate the video, and subscribe. And when you hit the tab subscribe button, be sure to click the bell so you get a notification every time I upload. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.